The graph of f of x equals to that has two turning points. The following information is also given. Okay, guys, so let's go understand this very nicely. So this part over here, I want you to look at that and I want you to really think about what does that mean? It's telling you when x is 2, then the y value is zero. That is an x-intercept. That is a mathematical way to say x-intercept. We are also told that the x-axis is a tangent to the graph at x equals to minus one. Okay, I'll show you what that means just now. We are also told that Notice here that they've got this line over here. That means it does not mean the inverse, by the way. The inverse has a minus one. That's inverse. This stands for first derivative. And what does the first derivative stand for again? The gradient. And so they're telling us that when x is one, the gradient is equal to zero. Ah, when is the gradient zero? Well, that's normally when it's a turning point, right? If you have a graph like this, when the gradient is zero, it's a turning point, okay? Then they also tell us that um, when x is equal to a half, the gradient, because remember, that's what that little line means, the gradient is positive because it says that the gradient is bigger than zero. Okay, quite a weird question. It now says, without doing any calculations, draw a graph indicating all of the x coordinates, um, the x coordinates of the x intercepts and the turning points. Okay, so we got to take this information and we got to try get a nice graph. Now you might not get it perfect. They might not give you enough information to get a perfect graph, but the teachers are going to be looking for specific things that you add to the graph. Okay, so we'll get our x and our y axis. And now we're literally just going to go fill in whatever we can. So they told us that when, um, when x is 2, y is zero. So when x is two, y is zero. So that's going to be here. Perfect. Then it says when x is one, the gradient is zero. Oh, wait, I forgot about this one. Let me get a highlighter quickly for you guys. Um, let's get a highlighter. Forgot about this one. Okay, so let's do that. So it says that the x-axis, now remember, this is the x-axis, okay? They said that the x-axis is a tangent when x is minus one. Okay, so when x is minus one, that's about here. Then the x-axis is a tangent. How can the x-axis be a tangent? It's when, it, it, it can only be a tangent if your graph is turning on the x-axis, then it's a tangent. But it could go like that, but it could also go like that. And we don't really know which one it is just yet. So it could be any of those, okay? Um, they then say, okay, so that when that, um, when X is one, when, okay. So they also told us that when X is one, the gradient is zero. Okay, so when X is one, we have another turning point. But now, so X is one is somewhere over here, but we don't know where that turning point is. It's somewhere along this line. It's somewhere along the X equals to one line, but we don't know if it turns here or if it turns somewhere down here. Okay, so there is one extra thing they've told us. They said that when X is a half, so X is a half is somewhere along this line. When X is a half, the gradient is positive. Okay, so the gradient must be positive when X is a half. So what does a positive gradient mean? It means that it goes up like that. 
that's a positive gradient. And if it goes down, then it must be a negative gradient. So when X is a half, we have a positive gradient. So that means the graph is doing something like that, which then means that the turning point must be somewhere up at the top here when X is one, and then it's gonna go through like that. And then, and then we then know that the graph is gonna go like this, and then it's gonna turn over here and like that. <laughs>